and welcome to my guide. Today we're going to be completing the quest Regicide. The quest requirement is underground pass and the stat requirements are 10 crafting and 56 agility. And just like in the underground pass quest, the higher your agility, the better. I just need it. Two bows and five arrows that you do not mind dropping to save some inventory space, a spade, four balls of wool, three ropes, and for the second half of this quest, what you will need is your third rope, your second bow, a regular limestone that you can buy from the Grand Exchange, or if you don't want to, you could also mine it yourself at the Odd Old Man between Varrock and Mauritania. Then also a pestle and mortar between 15 and 24 coal, a tinder box, and any kind of axe or rabbit meat. And rabbit meat you can buy from any trader crew member across the game. All right, let's deposit all that. For the recommended items, between 4 and 6 stamina potions, depending on how much weight reducing clothing you currently own, I suggest you to bring all your weight reducing clothing that you currently own. Then also a weapon to kill a combat 110 that can only use melee, and safe spots are available for magicians and archers. Also, some food to pass many traps in the underground pass as well as in Isavdar. One antidote or anti-poison of four doses should be enough, and one or two empty inventory slots should be enough. For the teleports, one to Falador, simply to use it as a bank and for the furnace. Then from Falador, we're going to Remington. I'm going to be teleporting straight there because my house is there. Or you could simply run from Falador. Then also one teleport to any bank of your liking before we're going back into the underground pass. Then also to West or Doin teleport, simply to get quicker into the underground pass. And one East Ardoin teleport that I currently do not have in my inventory to save some space for when the quest is completed. And one teleport away after the quest is completed. Where to start this quest is here in the castle of East Ardoin, where we've ended the quest Biohazard. Let's talk to King Lathis and select option 1 twice. I assume you have a plan and then select yes to start the quest. What we will now need to do is deal with the king's younger brother called Tyrus as he's forming strength in the western lands. So let's make our way back into the underground pass. Also in this quest we will need to traverse through the underground pass two times and after we have done this quest we will never have to traverse through this tunnel again. Unless you want to recharge your Ivanstaff. Once you've made it into the underground pass, use the northern or the southern rock light, climb over three rock slides before reaching a abandoned camp. Search it and grab one cloth. Then use this on an arrow to make a fire arrow, use this on the fire, the everlasting fire. Then go north, equip the arrow, equip the bow, and fire at the guide rope to lower the drawbridge. If you fail, grab another cloth from the equipment and try again with another fire arrow. After we have crossed the bridge, just a bit up north, there will find a red dot. That is a plank. Take it. Just to avoid taking 8 damage later in this dungeon, and then follow the dungeon going south. The next thing that we'll see are two ways to get across to the eastern side. We will need to take the northern one. Use your rope on the overhanging rock, and you'll swing across. If you happen to fail, just make your way back and try again. Next, continue east, and what we no longer need to save some inventory space are our arrows, 
as well as the bow, no longer needed, as well as our second rope. The second rope was only needed if we happened to fall down. Next, what we will now need to do is do the grid. In my previous guide, I suggested you to use tile markers or make a screenshot of your personal path across this grid. If you've lost your tile markers or your screenshot across this grid, then you will need to cross this grid by trial and error once again. I lost my tile markers and I had to do this trial and error method before starting this guide. Once you've made it across, let's pull the lever to go to, uh, well, the next section, I guess. Let's continue west to the thieving obstacles. There are two on the northern wall. Those are the odd markings. Search both of them. And the next three are on the southern wall. Search those odd markings and keep pressing yes to give it a go. If you try to run through, that will work, but you will always take damage. Even if you stand next to it and teleport away by simply running, you will always take damage. Next, let's go through the well to the second level of the underground pass. Keep going west to the first prison that you see, the south eastern prison let's pick lock that gate then stand in front of the loose soil dig with your spade and follow the dungeon and cross the ledge what we'll now need to do depends if you have 50 thieving or not if you do not then you will need to cross the stone bridge and use a stone walkway to go to the other side you will need to go south and then double north and that will be the maze. If you have 50 thieving, just simply unlock the gate just south of the stone walkway and you basically skip that maze. Next, once you've crossed the stone walkways, go through the pipe and make your way to where you've killed the three paladins in the underground boss quest. Once we've made it to the corner where there were the three paladins, let's go a little bit west and use our plank on any of the two flat rocks next to this uh, stalagmite. Next, continue west. And let's go enter Ivan's temple. We no longer need this regular plank. You may drop it if you want to. I don't think you also need a spade anymore. Let's continue south. And let's go on to the first stone walkway. If you have brought summer pies to boost your agility level by 5, be sure to do so before starting to jump these stone walkways and trying to cross these bridges, these gaps in the walkway. Even with 56 agility, you do happen to fall quite a lot. Cross the first bridge and then simply follow the walkway going south. You will need to cross four bridges successfully, consec consecutively, before you've made it to Ivan's temple. If you happen to fall down, then I would suggest you to run northwest and use the northwestern stairs to go back upstairs, because the bottom level is actually smaller than the upper level. If you use the southern stairs, then you will need to run a lot to go back up north and find that stone walkway again. If you use the northwestern stairs, that would be a lot quicker. Once you've made it into Ivan's temple, you will find Kaftik. If you have some inventory space over, let's talk to him to grab some more food if you say yes, please. Next, let's climb down the well of voyage and go west. Let's go through the cave. 
Let's exit this cave into Isavdar and the Elven Lands. If you thought that the underground path was bad, welcome to Isavdar. Next, continue west. Keep running west until an elf will spawn and it will start talking to you. When you spot that elf, just continue through the conversation as it will ask you what you're doing here. Once you press continue, the companions or the subordinates of Lord Ironworth will kill that elf and will say that you will need to speak with their lord. After that has happened, continue going west until you see a leaf's trap. These are 3x3 three three, 9 tiles. Click on a tile that is closest to your character to make your jump more successful. Next, continue southwest and we will now need to go to, well, follow the path going west to some more trees. Between the two evergreen trees, you will find a stick trap. Stand next to it and then spam click pass traps until you successfully passed that trap without taking any damage. Next, continue west and follow the path northwest until you see another leaf trap. Once again, click on a tile, jump leaves closest to your character and continue going north to have made it to Lord Ironworth's camp. Let's cross the log balance and just a bit north, northeast of the tent with the loom sign, there you should find Lord Ironworth. Let's talk to him, and after talking to him, let's uh, weave at the loom and select option 4 to make a strip of cloth to open up three inventory slots. Next, continue south, and we'll now need to go to me. Next, what we'll now need to do. Blah, blah, blah. Next, continue south, cross the bridge, and go back to the spike trap that we have just successfully passed. Just a bit south of it, we'll find an elf tracker that we'll need to talk to, who will teach us a new way how to traverse through the elven lands. So, keep going south, southeast, jumping the leaf trap, keep going southeast until you've made it to the elf tracker. Let's talk to it, but it does not trust a human. So let's make our way back north, northwest, back to Ironworth's camp. Keep going northwest, jumping the leaf trap, back to Lord Ironworth, and make that elf give us some proof that we can show that elf tracker that we're on their side. Back at the camp of Ironworth, let's talk to him, get the crystal pendant, and then go back to the elf tracker. This quest, it requires 5 to 6 stamina potions just to complete it if you want to continuously run. It's just traversing through the underground pass and the elven lands multiple times, and that is just the difficulty of this quest, to be honest. Let's talk to the elf tracker once again, and afterwards, a little bit west, you should find a dense forest. Go towards it, and in front of it, you'll find some footprints. Let's follow these tracks, then click to continue and return to the elf tracker, because you don't know how to enter the dense forest. After talking to the elf tracker, it will tell you to just simply click on it. 
and enter the dense forest. Now watch out, after you've entered the third dense forest, a Comet 110 guard will start attacking you. So before doing that, I'm gonna quickly auto-cast Ivan Blast. I forgot to recharge it at the underground pass, but I'm gonna do that next round. Protect from melee and enter the third dense forest and start attacking the Tyrus guard. If you are also a mage or archer, you can use these mushrooms as a safe spot. If you've brought a whip or something, then just use Protect from melee. The max hit of the Tyrus guard is just 15. You have completed the underground boss quest. You have defeated much more difficult boss than this guard. After this guard has been defeated, let's go north and you'll find two tripwires. Doesn't matter which one, just try to step over and depending on your agility, you'll either get hit 10 damage and get poisoned or you don't. Then continue north, be sure to drink an antidote if you got hit and go through the dense forest. Next continue west and west you'll find a giant catapult. South of it, they'll find another Tyrus guard. He will not attack you. No one will. Let's enter the dense forest next to that Tyrus guard to go into Tyrus's camp. Because we kind of want a second opinion. There's always two sides to a story, so let's talk to General Heining, north of the center tent, the guard without a helm, but King Tyrus doesn't trust anyone, and you will not be able to speak to him. Around his tent, there are three empty barrels. Pick up all three of them. And then, go north. Let's return to the Elf Tracker. If you remember how to get there, I think I do. I just completed this on my other account, like two hours ago. I originally planned on making the, the quest guide on that account, because I felt confident, but I fucked it up so much. So here we go, we're doing it on the Hark Reiner, man. Let's go through the dense forest, then step over any of the two tripwires. From there, go straight east. Hopefully you do not get hit. I think there's a massive difference, because on my other account, I got... I had 56 agility, this one has 73, and there's a massive difference currently. I got hit constantly with a tripwire. Let's continue going east to the elf tracker, and from there, go south. Keep going south, and you'll find some tar. Go stand next to the edge of the tar, and use your barrels on the tar to get barrels of coal tar. Next, next to you, take some sulfur, and let's go north and northeast to Lord Ironworth. We didn't really have to talk to the elf tracker, just go back to Lord Ironworth to get the book of big banks, so we can transform these barrels of coal tar into bombs. But we will still need to jump across a leaf strap. And since we weigh a ton with these barrels of coal tar, be sure to have at least 15 HP or 30 HP before jumping this strap. What the hell? On my other account, I fell three times before managing to get across. Wow, fine by me. Let's cross the ledge. Let's return to Lord Ironworth to complete section one of this quest. We're basically halfway done with this quest now. Once you got the Book of Big Bangs, open it, close it, drop it, and replace it with an empty pot that you can find in the tent just next to you. Once you have that empty pot, let's teleport to Falador or any other place that has a bank and a furnace. Let's go to the bank. 
You can also buy uh, an empty pot from the general store here if you want to, but that requires one coin. So let's go to the bank and deposit everything. What we will still need are our three barrels of coal tar, a pestle and mortar, your regular limestone, then also one teleport to Remington, or just simply run to Remington from Falador, and one teleport to any bank before going back into the underground pass. So I suggest an Ardoin teleport if you do not have a West Ardoin teleport with you. Then for the rest of the inventory should simply be coal. Next, let's go east and go to the furnace of Falador or any other furnace. Be sure to have equipped any kind of gloves and then use the limestone on the furnace. Just don't do it barehandedly else you will get 8 damage. Once you have your quick climb, grind it with your pestle and mortar to get some pot of quick climb. Next, teleport to Remington or simply run south. And let's go to the chemist's house just like in the biohazard quest. Let's talk to the chemist and select option 2 about your quest. And he will allow you to use the fractionalizing still just outside. Use your barrel of coal tar on it to see this user interface. On the left side you see a pressure valve with a pressure indicator. In the center this is a big button where you can add coal. And on the right side there's a tar regulator with a heat indicator. Click on the right side of the tar regulator twice and you will see that the pressure will go up. Then press the right side of the pressure valve once until the pressure arrow is in the green zone. It must not be in the orange section. The pressure or the heat, if it ever gets in the orange section, your barrel will explode and you will lose your hardcore status. What we'll now need to do is add some heat and do this very slowly by adding coal by simply clicking on the door in the center. First use two, then wait until the heat stops going up, then add one more. It should be around the green area and you'll see that the bar will go green. Wait until the heat goes down a bit, then add one coal. Wait until the heat goes down and add one coal. Once the bar is completely green, close the interface and you will get a barrel of naphtha. Once you have exploded your barrel or you've made a barrel of naphtha, use a second barrel of coal tar on the fractionalizing still and do this one more time. Once you have your two barrels of naphtha, let's make our way to any kind of bank to prepare to make the bomb and return to Tyrus's camp to destroy it. If you successfully did this and didn't explode, then you may drop your third barrel of coal tar. That one was just a backup. So, once at any bank, let's first grab the sulfur and the strip of cloth. Grind the sulfur into dust, then use the quick climb on the barrel of naphtha, just one. Then the ground sulfur on that barrel mix to make a barrel bomb. And I use the strip of cloth as a fuse. This is the only item that we'll need to complete this quest. The second barrel of naphtha is needed for the Moorings End Part 1 quest, so put that in your 
quest tab. If you are an ultimate Iron Man, get wrecked. All right, for the bank, we can deposit everything. Let's grab our barrel bomb. The bow and arrows that you don't mind losing. A spade. Two ropes. A tinderbox. An antidote and some food to pass a lot of traps. As well as some food to cross the underground pass. Then also be sure to bring all your weight reducing clothing. You do not need to bring any weapons. Those just weigh you down and about two or three stamina potions should be enough to complete this quest. Next, for the teleports, one teleport to Western Doin to the entrance of the Underground Pass, one teleport to Eastern Doin to complete our quest, and a one teleport away after the quest is completed. Also, you will need to bring an axe or a raw rabbit that you can buy from any charter crew member across the game and cook it while you're at it. Once you think you are ready, let's make our way back through the underground pass and through the elven lands to Tyrus's camp. Honestly, I think you should probably just let it sink in that it is going to be your last time that you're going to be traversing through the underground pass, on this account at least. Because after we have completed this quest in about 10 to 15 minutes, you will no longer need to go through the underground pass since you will have unlocked a ferry ring near Camp Tyrus. There will be a charter ship near Tyrus Camp. And if you complete the next quest in line, Morning's End Part 1, then you will also get a teleport crystal, which teleports you straight to Letia on the eastern side of... Uh... Is of Dar. Also, not to forget the Arandar Gate will be now open to us, which is just located west of the outpost, south of the Tree Gnome Stronghold. The Arandar Gate is pretty helpful, to be honest, especially with star mining. There are quite a lot of stars in the Elven Lands and in the Arandar Mine itself. Also, there are so many hard clues located in the Elven Lands. Like, oh my god, I had to drop so many just because I didn't really want to do Regicide. Like, this dungeon gives you so much emotion. Like, if you did this quest on release day in, like, uh, somewhere in 2003 in RuneScape Classic without running, and the only quest guides there were were written guides on forums, figuring this shit out. How to traverse through this dungeon. Slowly just figuring out that you have to be evil just to be able to get access into the Ivan's temple. Thank you. 
Once we've made it back to Isavdar, let's continue running west back to... How is it called again? The Leaf Strap. Yes, the Leaf Strap. The 3x3 three three Leaf Strap. Click on the option closest to your character. Not on the tree, dumbass. Next! Oh, ouch! Climb back up. Once you've crossed, go a bit south and then go through the dense forest, going east. I don't really like going through uh, the spike trap. It always hurts me. So I'm going through the dense forest, just a bit east, then a bit south. They'll find another leaf trap. Jump across that one as well. And here you'll find some rabbits. If you've brought raw or cooked rabbit meat, then you can skip this part. Just grab one raw rabbit, then chop down any tree, light it with your tinderbox, and cook the raw rabbit. Once you have a cooked one, let's continue going west. Here is the elf tracker, by the way. Keep going west, back to the footprints in front of the dense forest. Go through the dense forest, where we have fought the Comet 110 Tyrus Guard. Then continue northwest, stepping over any of the two tripwires. Ouch. And then go through the dense forest, going north. Then let's go to the big catapult. And in front of it, they'll find a guard guarding the catapult. Use, right click, and use the raw rabbit on the Tyrus guard. Press to continue, and you'll see a fade to black. Then use the barrel bomb on the catapult, launching the barrel bomb and destroying the tent of King Tyrus of West Ardoin. Once that is over, let's return to Lord Ironworth to tell him that the deed is done. And let's return to Lord Ironworth to receive a letter that we can bring to King Lathus. To go back to Lord Ironworth, let's go through the dense forest. Then step over the tripwire. Then immediately go east and go through more dense forest. And go north. Keep going north and northwest to Lord Ironworth's camp. Be sure to pay attention to the leaf trap near that camp. Ouch, once again, dude. I don't even have a bomb with me. My weight must be negative 100. All right, once we've made it back to Ioworth's camp, let's talk to him to receive a letter that we can bring to King Lathis so we can complete our quest. Let's teleport to Ardoin and make our way to King Lathis to complete our quest. But in front of the castle, we'll be stopped by an elf called Erwin, who is an ally from the elf that got killed at the start of the quest by the warriors or the subordinates of Lord Ironworth. That elf will remove the magic seal from the letter. And what you learn from reading the letter is that King Tyrus, the one that you just murdered, was actually the good guy trying to stop the elves from resurrecting the Dark Lord. And King Lathus is a Zamorakian. And King Lathus, the King of East Ardoin, is actually a Zamorakian. 
who is helping Iowerth in resurrecting the Dark Lord. Lathus allowed the Iowerth clan into Westerdoin, and in return they will resurrect the Dark Lord, who will help him to destroy Camelot. But the deed is done, and we can still claim our reward from King Lathus. We can help the good guys in the following quests. And congratulations, you've completed Regicide. You are awarded with 3 quest points, access to Tarawin, 1350 agility experience, 15,000 coins, access to the overpass of Arandar, to walk from Kandrin to Isavdar, so you don't need to go through the underground pass, ability to equip Dragon Halberds at 60 attack and 30 strength, ability to charter ships to Port Tyrus, Ability to use Iorworth Camp and Zalandra Teleport Scrolls, as well as the ability to use the fairing code BJS. Also, you've now completed a quest requirement for the following quest Roving Elves. This was my guide how to complete Redicide. Hopefully, it has helped. Hit the bell, rate, and comment. Okay, thanks, bye. Well, I suggest you to run northwest are you serious dude are you serious dude i even ate the fucking pie dude are you fucking serious dude that is i weigh 19